Hola YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I am your girl, Beauty Valenoria, across all my social media platforms. Please go ahead and thumbs up this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it amongst your family and friends. But enough of the intro. We're going to get right into this actual look. I'm not doing a pre-filmed intro for this look because this is going to be my Valentine's Day's blue look. One of my subscribers, thank you so much, girl. She suggested that I use one of my called new lipsticks from Maybelline. This is the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink um, from Maybelline New York, and this is the shade 105 Explore. So I was already thinking about doing a blue look with the Sarzar pigment that I got that you guys saw hauled. So we're gonna go ahead and do a full face uh, first impressions for this particular Valentine's Day blue look. So if you're ready to get into it, let's go. Taking me home For one thing really do one. So I'm starting out with my eyebrows already done. Starting out with my face and my skincare notes, I had some questions about that. Um, I always start my skincare prior to taking my shower, prior to even starting my makeup. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and wash my face and exfoliate my face. And 20 minutes before I get in the shower, I'll go ahead and do some type of hydrating hyaluronic face mask or depending on what skin issues I'm having at the time, I'll do a, skate, a face mask to combat that problem. And since it's the winter time, right now I'm using my Tony Molo. This is the Master Lab. This is their hyaluronic acid hydrating face mask. So I'll take it off, put this on for 20 minutes to leave it on. And right after 20 minutes is over, I'll still leave the face mask on. I'll go ahead and get in the shower, take a shower, get out the shower. And then as soon as I get out the shower, I'll take the face mask off. And I'll take the remaining serum that's left in here and squeeze it out on my hand. <laughs> Some came out. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and take the remaining serum and go ahead and take the face mask off and smooth in the rest of the serum. We're going to go ahead and do complete first impressions like I was telling you guys. I'm going to go ahead and use my Pat McGrath Labs. This is the Mothership 2 Sublime Palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And I'm also gonna go ahead and use my Pro Fusion Cosmetics. This is their Bold Eyeshadow Palette. And I'm also gonna be using my Sarazar Pigment and Mystique. I'm just gonna use my regular Jessup Fluffy Blending Brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into the, the Pro Fusion Palette first. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this shade right here. And I'm going to use that through my crease. It is kind of powdery, but this is the reason why I'm going to go ahead and do my eyes first. Anytime you're working with um, loose pigments and glitters, you definitely want to go ahead and do your eyes first. Trust, it'll give you a much easier way just to clean up all the fallout and move on with your face versus having to really protect your base from the fallout. So we're going to go ahead and put this in my crease first. And we're going to put this pretty high up. And I didn't use a primer or anything that would mat out my hyperpigmentation with my eyes. Because of the shade that I'm going in with next, I don't really need that. I will go ahead and take a Morphe E14. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into that lighter shade right next to it. And mix it with a little bit of the white. And set down the actual brow bone. And this will also make it easier for me to blend my shadows high up into my actual brow bone. Mixing that light brown and the white gave me more of my skin tone. Going back into my transition color. And right now I'm just packing this color on. It's a brown with just a little bit of red to it. So it'll really help with the color that I'm really needing to add in as the main star of this eye look. And this is what it'll look like. You just want to make sure it has a smooth blend. Because now we're going to go into the Pat McGrath palette. I'm going to be using a Juvia's Place. This is from their turquoise set. This is just a little pointed blender brush. And I'm going into the Pat McGrath palette. And I'm going to go ahead and use... Is this a shimmer? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and mix these two shades right here together to actually create the eye look. And these shades, I hate the fact that the shade names aren't on here, so I have to keep my package with the shade name. I'm like, it would be so much easier if my shade names were on here, but no. So I'm gonna go ahead and be mixing dark and rose dust together. 
And I'm gonna use these to go in there and actually deepen up the look. Just right here in the crease. And I switched to a smaller brush because I wanna make sure I keep this pretty detailed in the crease. And the little bit of shimmer that's coming off doesn't bother me, just simply because the entire look is gonna be a shimmer look anyway. But the original color, the transition color that I went in with was an actual matte. Now once we're done with the blending, it looks like this. So now we're gonna go ahead and go in and play with this actual pigment. And I'm gonna use my NYX pigment primer. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the back of my hand. I'll work from the back of my hand with this one. And I'll go ahead and just put this on my lid. Just making sure I put it in the areas where I really want this pigment to stick. And this will help with any fallout I may have. And you wanna make sure while you're doing this that you go in and you do it with a pretty light and even layer. And then I'll immediately go in and put some of the pigment. This is the Mystique pigment. And this is by Sarazar Cosmetics. Working from the back of my hand. And I'll just flip the brush over to the side. That's the side I put the pigment primer down. That's the side without. And I'll go in and pick that up. And start pressing that on the eyelid. Now all of that fallout that's happening is something I anticipated. Which is the reason why I told you guys not to do your face first. And I'm working with it dry versus wet because I like the way it looks better dry. Now that we have the pigment done, I'm gonna go back into my Pat McGrath palette and I'm using a Minaj 5001E brush. This is just a flat brush. And I'm gonna go back into the shade dark. And I'm just gonna go ahead and define that semi crease that I created. So I'm just gonna take this a little bit on and I'm just gonna go around and just define that just a little bit. I switched out my brushes. I'm gonna be using a Sigma Small Angle E65. Going into that same shark shade dark to go in here and just deepen that crease just a little bit. And once I have it darkened with the dark shade, then I'm gonna go into extreme black and go right against that blue just to add a little bit more depth to the top. So I'll keep working with these shades to deepen it up. Now that I actually have the crease defined a little bit more around that blue, I'm gonna go into my Wet n Wild eyeshadow palette and this is in the Stop Playing Safe palette. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this red right here, just a little bit on the same Juvia's Place turquoise brush that I used to pick down the earlier shades. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that black out just a little bit. So I don't have any harsh lines right there. And I'm just blending on top of the black. And because this has a point, it'll really be able to help you get it in and blend that out. And now that we have the crease blended out, now we're gonna go in with the same brush and we're gonna go into the Pat McGrath, the shade Extreme Black right here. And we're just gonna use that to deepen up this outside. Just a little, not a lot. And with black, you always wanna go in and work a little at a time. Now that harsh line in between the blue and black, I'm gonna take care of that in just a minute. So I kinda get the shape that I want going. And then I'll go into my Kat Von D shade in light. Her black, which is the blackest black on the market that I have had a chance to use. And I'll start to put that directly on top of that blue to blend that blue into the actual black. I put down the Pat McGrath black first, so this way I have a starting point on where I'm trying to go. And that's what it's looking like for right now. And now we're gonna go ahead and take another fluffy brush. I'm gonna go ahead and take my Sigma Tapered Blending E40 and I'm going back into the actual red from my Wet n Wild palette to blend on top of that black. And I'm blending halfway on top of the black and halfway on top of the first transition color with it. So this way the blend comes off a little bit better. Once I have that harsh black line blended out, I'll go back into my original shade. The original brush that I had, 
and I'll go ahead and go back over the top of that so I don't lose too much definition in the blend. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here on the other eye. So once your blend is all the way done, this is what it's going to look like. Once you have that blend done, now you wanna go ahead and go in and just take a makeup wipe and you're gonna start to clean up some of your fallout. Once you have your fallout cleaned up, now you're gonna go ahead and take a gel eyeliner or a cream eyeliner in black. I'm using my Tarte Tarte's Pro. This is the blackest black, and this is a, pretty much a gel liner. I'm gonna use that same brush that I used to define the black in my crease, which is my Sigma Small Angle E56 brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that product on the actual tip. And I'm gonna be working from the tip of this with my actual eyeliner. And you'll just go in and start to do your eyeliner. And the black eyeliner you're putting down is just to hide the lash band. Now when you get out to the outside, go from the bottom lash and do a wing. Now while that wing is still wet, you're gonna take a stiff, small pencil brush. I'm using my Juvia's Place J8 Small Corner Brush. And I'm going back into my black from the Kat Von D Shade and Light. And I'm gonna smudge that out. So with this, you're just going back and forth, guys. Once you have that black smudged out, now you wanna go ahead and go back in with your red on top of that black to blend it out so you don't have such a harsh line right there at the end. And I'm just blending directly on top. And all I did was just take and squeeze, and I'm blending. This is gonna be a bunch of back and forth, but in the end, it'll pay off. Once that is done, now you're gonna repeat the same thing that you did on this eye on the next eye. Now, once you have both eyes even, go back in with your makeup cleaner wipe and go ahead and clean up any fallout you may have had. And this is where you're gonna go ahead and start to sharpen up that line a little bit on the outside. Black does make a mess. So just clean it up. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the base. For primer, I'm gonna go ahead and use my CoverGirl Outlast All Day Primer Base. This is a makeup wear extender. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. And this is a very tacky base. I almost wanna try this one out up against my uh, gripping primer from Cover FX just to try to see which one works better. Another first impression is gonna be our Hourglass Vanish Foundation, and this is the Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation, and I am in the shade Golden Almond. They say you only need half a pump. I'm just gonna pump out one full pump on the back of my hand, and I'm gonna use my little tart brush that I use to clean out my eyebrows to apply it. I'm gonna go ahead and split it in half on the back of my hand. So we're gonna see how this actually works with my face. I'm not necessarily a huge full coverage girl, so this may work pretty good for me. Or it may not, it may be a hot mess. They say you only need half a pump to do your entire face, and we shall see. I like using a little applicator brush to go ahead and put it on because I'm able to be very careful around my eye makeup and also I'm able to be very careful around my eyebrows. So I'll go ahead and use the brush to go ahead and do this part of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my Sigma Edge Kabuki F87. I still got the other half of the pump on the back of my hand. And to wet the brush a little bit, I'm gonna be using my e.l.f. Makeup Misting Set. This is with the aloe and green tea. So I'll go ahead and spray this. And I'll go ahead and start to apply this in. And that flat edge is what I like because it allows me to get right there underneath and around. So I'm able to go ahead and take it and smooth it out around. So that part I definitely like. And I also know that this foundation dries pretty fast. So you wanna move pretty fast with this foundation. Now all the reviews and everything that I saw on this foundation, they was like, I knew it drew, I know, I knew it dried down pretty fast, so I knew not to dot my whole face up because I was gonna have a hot mess of a problem with that. And I also knew that no one yet has been able to use half a pump to do their whole face. And you know, I'm not necessarily a full, full coverage. I still like to have slight imperfections coming through, but that's what half a pump looks like on my face versus the no foundation. 
So it's pretty. I can agree to that. But I will say I waited just a little too long in the blending out process because I could see different parts right here on my jawline. So I'll go back in and fix that down here. So I had to take just a little bit more to help work that and blend that up. I'm trying to do one pump for the whole face because this foundation is, oh, it ain't cheap. It's not cheap at all. But that's what it looks like with one layer applied. And this is what it looks like with no foundation on. So you guys can see my hyperpigmentation. You can see my scars and everything. And of course, you guys already know my neck is dark in my body, so I don't match my foundation to my actual face. I always match my foundation to my chest. So there it is, matched to my chest, guys. But once again, no foundation, hyperpigmentation, sad face, hormonal acne. <laughs> Plus my skin is purging. Remember I told you guys I'm doing a new skincare uh, product routine right now. And that's it with the foundation. So I can say this is a very beautiful foundation. I'm gonna need a little bit more. I still got some left on my hand, but I'm gonna need a little bit more than that. I already know I put maybe half a pump. So for my full face, not going in with a thick heavy layer, it'll take me a pump and a half. So depending on how you are with your foundation, how generous you are with your foundation, you may need to adjust your pumps accordingly. Going back in with my brush and working pretty fast because uh, talking to you guys threw me off a little bit. And now I'm just gonna take what's left on the back of my hand and start working this in. I will say you do have to work very fast with this. This is one of the quickest drying foundations I've ever used. And I didn't speed up this part because I wanted you guys to see exactly how quickly you need to be moving with this foundation. And I'm gonna take just a little bit more, not a lot, just a tad more on my hand. So at this point, I'll probably use a pump and three-fourths of pumps, just to let you know. Wet this again, because the wetting of the brush really did help out. But if you can see right there, see my spot right here still peeking through? I wanna go ahead and get that covered. And I also need to make sure I got this nose area covered. My nose is looking a little suspect. So of all my spots and everything that I have, that was the only area where I felt like I needed to go in and put in another layer. And because this Sigma brush is something like a Kabuki brush a little bit, it really helps without leaving any streaks, see? I don't have any streaks or anything on my face. You can still see some hyperpigmentation right there coming through, but I just put it on one layer and I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and blend out this uh, line of demarcation. It's not cute. Let's go ahead and make sure we take care of that. So there we go. And you can still see hyperpigmentation right here and right here, but I'm okay, I'm cool with that. This is the face. So, I thought I was gonna have to go over it again with an actual sponge just to kind of really mesh it into the skin like how I always do, but I don't think I have to. Yeah. See how pretty and smooth that is? It completely smooth out my skin. You can barely see my pores. I have pores, all humans do, so I'm gonna have pores. But this, hands down, smooth those pores out like, we have pores, but not really. And I'll go back in with just a little on the actual thing. I have these smile lines right here around the cracks of my mouth, and they always do that. So, I'm going with just a little foundation. 
to get those a little more covered. Cause that is hands down my problem area. And we can go ahead and get rid of this lip gloss. From my lips so this way, the oil from the lip gloss don't start to go in and create problems around the mouth. And it's pretty much dry on the face. Yeah, it is transferring a little bit. See that? It does transfer. So any claims they may have of it being transfer proof, I haven't even set this down with anything yet. Uh, yeah, that's a false claim. But then again, I told you guys, no makeup is completely transfer proof, so. I had my pure makeup sponge in here. <laughs> my cat decided she wanted to bite it after I had cleaned it, so I had to re-clean it again. But I have my pure makeup sponge here, and we're gonna go ahead and go right into the concealer part. And today I'm gonna be using my Kevin Aquan. This is the, the Etherealist Supernatural Concealer, and I have this shade EC06. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on under the eyes. Let's see how this goes. I wanted to see how much I could get to before I had to dump back into the product. And y'all already know, I don't take my concealer when I put my concealer on. I don't take it all the way underneath my eyes. It helps my eyes, since I have these lines under my eyes, it helps my eyes cut down on creasing. So I'll put it down, let it dry down just a little bit, but not too much, because I don't know how fast this dries or the work time with it. But I'll take and I'll blend it up underneath my eyes, but I won't put the actual product directly under my eyes. So we're gonna go ahead and start blending this out. Let's see. Oh, it dries pretty fast. Work real fast with this one too. Honestly, God, I don't know if it dries fast or if it's the hourglass foundation that's making everything else dry fast. Oh, yeah. Get the blending. I'll bring you guys in a little closer so you can see what just happened. Okay, if you can see, while I was blending the foundation down, it took the concealer down, you can see where it took all the foundation off the tip of my nose. <sighs> I don't know if it's just the foundation or if it's the concealer, but let's try to correct that. And how I'll go in and correct that is just by putting both of them back down to see what happens. Now this could either be a disaster or problem fixed. I'm going to use a different blender. I'm going to use my velvet sponge under my eyes because I'm, I want to see if it was really just a concealer that did that or just a blender. <clears throat> and I can already tell you, I let this one drop too long. So when you do this at home, guys, don't let it dry. Work pretty fast with it. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was my fault. That's what you call user error. <clears throat> um, it didn't work too well with the pure sponge. So the pure sponge is a no-go with this concealer. <clears throat> the microfiber sponge worked perfectly fine with it. And don't let it dry down too much. Which means if you get a lighter color, a way, way lighter color, I can almost see this concealer being a perfect eyeshadow base. So let's go ahead and do the other side. <clears throat> Let's see if anything weird happens on this side. Mm -mm. Nothing weird happened on that side. And that blended out like a dream. <clears throat> I always go back over the ridges with my foundation brush to make sure it's blended in. But that concealer is pretty much already set, which I am surprised, stoked, the whole nine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set this really quickly. I'm gonna use my Fenty Beauty and I'm using the shade Honey. And one nice trick that I've started doing with my powders, because I have creasy eyes, I like to go in first with just a regular dense kind of brush. And this is just an Ulta Beauty brush that I got in one of my holiday gift sets. And I'll take a little bit of powder on the actual brush Make sure I don't have any creases before I go in and set this. And I'll just go in and set it with the brush. And I'll go ahead and same brush, set the rest of the face. I will tell you that uh, that foundation set down pretty quick because as I'm taking the brush over my face with the powder, I'm not getting too much drag. That's a good thing. This is the face completely set down. So I'm just gonna take a regular brush to go ahead and get the rest of the powder off my face. I'm gonna be using my Morphe E5 to go ahead and make sure I got any and all powder off my face. And I'll use another brush to do this because this brush doesn't have any additional product or anything on it. So it's gonna act kinda like a sponge, except for powders. Needing any and all additional powder that I have on my face that the other brush may not have really picked up because it was already saturated with powder. This one won't. And before I set that down, I'm gonna go back into the same brush I had with the actual original colors on it from my Profusion Cosmetics palette and also my Wet n Wild palette. No additional product, well, I'm not. I'm gonna take a little bit more product. I'm gonna dunk into the one from the Profusion, and I'm also gonna dunk into the one from Wet n Wild, knock off the excess. And right in here where you can see the blending needs to occur, I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. And with a light hand, I'll go ahead and go over this. And then with a clean brush with no additional product on it, this is just a regular Juvia's J3 Tapered Contour Brush. I'll go ahead and go over all of that to make sure it's blended in correctly. So this way I don't have any weird harsh stopping lines right here in between my eyeshadow and my skin. See? And now that that's blended in, now we can tackle the under eyes. Now to tackle these under eyes, I don't really know what I want to do, but I do know I want to keep the blues there. So with me wanting to keep the blue there, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a Jessup 226 smudger brush. And I'm going into the Wet n Wild Sane palette, the Stop Playing Safe into that blue right there. And I'm gonna use that blue, just a smudge underneath my eyes. So it'll look like that. And to connect the top and bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and go back into my Kat Von D shade and light, back into that black and the one I was using to smudge out that upper lash line. And I'm just gonna use it right here, just bring them together. And I'm only smoking the outer 25% with the black, the rest is blue. And for my eyeliner, I was gonna do a blue eyeliner, but this look already has the blue on the lower. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a regular black eyeliner. And you guys already know I'm using my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Eyeliner in the shade Perversion. 
it's always it's always the same liner because this one doesn't smudge on me it doesn't move around and it doesn't get weird the one thing i want to tell you guys when you're sharpening a wooden pencil before you go to put it in your eye run it around your finger to make sure you don't feel anything that may have splintered off from the actual sharpening before you go in to put it on your eye just a word of the wise You'll never want to make the mistake of actually scratching your eyeball or your lower lid because you were moving a little too fast. Especially if you're working on a client. Especially if you're working on a client. And now what I'll do, I'll take and just squeeze my eyes because it does do minimal transfer from top and bottom. So if I'm putting this black on the top and a different color on the bottom, I'll put the black on the top, wait a little bit, and then I'll put a different color on the bottom. But in this case, we're perfectly fine. Now, we are ready to go in and start with a little bit of smoke work and have a little fun smoking stuff out. I'm going to use a Sigma Blending E25 and I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of blending to that blue underneath to where it starts to make sense. And I'll go ahead and go back into my Wet n Wild and I'm going to take the base of the, of the color that I'm putting on. It's going to be this red. But I'm also going to use this little pink right here in the middle from the Profusion, which is super dusty. So make sure you guys dust off the excess. And now I'll go in and start to blend that out. So I'm really just blowing out that lower lash line. And if you look at what I'm doing, I'm actually just hugging where my eye naturally folds to hide that fold. And I know I lost just a little bit of the blue. Just go back in after you're done blending and just re-intensify re that blue back. Same thing to the other one. If you work with older clients, or if you just have, you know, prominent wrinkles, or if you're getting older in age, you know, whatever, guys. This is a beautiful trick, smoking out the lower lash line to add youth to any look you're doing. It's the reason why from time to time you'll see Beyonce, J-Lo, Kim Kardashian, different ones with blown out lower lash lines. It does help with looks and different looks you're going in for. The same powder brush that I had the Fenty on, I'm going to go ahead and sweep away any of that fallout. And because it's still saturated with powder, it's wiping it right off and making sure everything is set in place. And now before I do anything else with the actual face, let's go ahead and do blush. Blush today. I'm gonna take my Coastal Sense Forever blush, and this is in the shade Exquisite. Still on that Morphe E5, and I'm gonna use this to apply it right here. And the reason why I love the E5 for applying blush is because it'll go in there and it'll get your line going correctly, and then once you turn it, you can start really blowing it out and adding color to the face, but without it being like too much color. You don't have to worry about it being too much color. And I know what you guys are saying, woo, man, that's a lot of blush, a lot of blush. For now, that's what it looks like, for now. And I just take and just wipe the brush off. Because now I'm gonna go ahead and go into um, a new bronzer that I have. I have the Milani, this is the Silky Matte Bronzing Powder in Sun Drench 04. Let's see if this will actually bronze me or if I need to pull out, use the same brush, or if I need to pull out something else. Hmm. Yeah, it works. And I always blend and pull my bronzer up into my blush and right here around my jawline. And I love this particular brush for that because it goes in, it lays down the product, but it also helps with the airbrush effect. So yeah, it bronze, it's a pretty bronzer. And this is more or less of a light red bronzer on my skin tone. So I would caution you guys just to be a little careful. Color reference NC45, if you're not into a red bronzer, then this may not be for you. Now I'm gonna take and squeeze on whatever's left. I'm just gonna go down the sides of my nose and around the corners of my nose. And now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna go ahead and take 
that brush that I had with the Fenty setting powder on it and go into here and just use that just to clean up a little bit. Before I settle in on which highlighter I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this loose eyeshadow from Peaches and Cream Makeup, they're mermaids. It looks white, but it's not. I'm gonna go ahead and wet my brush first. I'm just using the Smashbox Primer Water and I'm going into the pigment and the inner eye highlight. And that's what it looks like adding that onto it. It's a white, but it has a blue shift with tons of sparkle added to it. But since I have you guys this close, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the excess bronzer from the actual brush. You guys know I use like to use the same brush to do the same thing. Now I'll go back in and blend and marry all of this together. And now that we have that blended and married together, I'm gonna go ahead and go into, I'm using this crown brush. It's like a little, foundation brush, but I actually like it for loose highlighters. I'm gonna go ahead, since this face is so icy, I'm gonna go ahead and use Gold Tinsel. And this is from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This is what it looks like on the inside, and I'll take and I'll work from the top. Same brush that I did the inner eye corner highlights with. I'll take just a little bit of that and I'll go ahead and go in here and highlight underneath this brow bone. So now, one trick that I learned, I forgot who I was watching on YouTube, but they say this really helps your makeup stay in place if you go in to get rid of the powder effect and use this prior to using your actual setting spray. And I've been using it for like the last three, four weeks and I will say it has made a big difference. So along the way you pick up little tips and tricks and this is one. I'm spraying the Smashbox Photo Primer Finish Water, Photo Finish Primer Water. And instead of using it as an actual primer, use it to go in and actually set down your makeup. And right before it's finished drying, I'll go in with just one more touch of the highlighter. Right here on the tops. And on a clean brush, go in and completely take that and blend that on that. So now we have that done. And the highlighter is blink. Where we going? Everywhere. So now that we're finished with that, we're gonna go ahead and go back into the actual eye. Okay, now that we finished that step, we went ahead and got dressed for this evening because you know, today is that Blues Valentine's Day look. That uh, man bump look. We finna go out, we finna turn up, we finna have a good time. So I went ahead and took the hair down, completed out my actual braid out, laid down the edges. And we're gonna be using the Morphe Premium Lashes in So Charming. And this is what they look like right now with the lash glue on them. And today I'm using my Tarte Lash Glue and this is the Tarte Tartius Pro and this is the Lash Glue in Black. This is another one of my favorite eyelash glues. But while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and tackle these eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my Ulta Beauty Limitless Lashes Mascara. You know the ones I always use, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on. Now we'll go ahead and do the lips since we have you bought in a little closer. We're gonna use the Maybelline New York Superstay Matte Ink, what I told you guys earlier, the shade 105 and Explore. So we'll go ahead and put this on. And the thing I love about this is the tip. 
because it makes lines look so easy. And that is so pretty. So now that we have the lips done for now, <clears throat> now we're gonna go back in and put the lashes on. I messed it with the lashes done and on. And I was feeling just a little extra. I'm always feeling a little extra, so I wanted to go in and add something else additional to the actual lips. Taking the Mystique by Cesara Cosmetics again on the back of my hand. And I'm gonna go in and you already guessed it. Take a brush. And just make sure that nothing is coming off. So those are the lips. And I'm gonna take what's remaining of this and I'm gonna add my e.l.f. makeup lock and seal. And I'm adding one drop to it. This is my La Salazar brush. And I'm gonna take and mix the remaining part of that pigment together on the back of my hand. Oops need a little bit more, so a little too thick. And I'm going back into the eyes. And I'm just going over it. And then while it's still just a little wet, I'll take just a little bit more. And just put it on top so I can really start to get the shine of the pigment to come through. And because the Maybelline Matte Superstay Ink Lipstick, it eventually dries down to a uh, matte lipstick, not completely transfer player proof, adding the loose pigment on top, turns it into, it's not budging, it's not going anywhere. So now when you walk in, the reason why I just did earrings with this look, instead of putting on a necklace is because all of the drama with this look is happening with your lips and your eyes. So everything else can be a tie-in to pull everything together, but you're gonna leave it pretty much alone. So now that we have that done, now we'll go in and lock in this look for the night. This is the final part of this makeup look outside of the mascara on the bottom lashes. But before I do the mascara on the bottom lashes, I'm gonna go ahead and set my face. So. I'm using my Urban Decay, my All Nighter Setting Spray. And with this, I'll go ahead and bounce back around my face. Cause girl, we going out tonight. We don't need this makeup to budge, move. We not going anywhere. The makeup isn't. And now we'll go ahead and finish up the bottom lashes. And this is gonna be a completed look guys. If you're ready to experience your makeup blues and hang out tonight, we got you, girl. But if you made it to this point of the video, please go ahead and show me some love. Get a conversation started with me in the description box below. And again, until next time, you know I love you, thank you, and you know I don't care when you're watching me in the morning, afternoon, evening, late at night, on your lunch break. You know, I'm just happy that you decided to spend some time with me, so thank you. And until next time, YouTube. Bye.